Hello, I am Robin. Welcome to day 10 and a half of Disney Plus Movie Reviews. This is day 10 and a half because I watched today. I just didn't make the video. So here we are. So uh, for day 10 and a half, I watched Atlantis, The Lost Empire. There's a colon in the name, which is why there are a bajillion colons in the title of this video. I liked Atlantis. It was a good movie. So when I was in like, well, this movie came out in 2001. So when I was in first grade, my family took a trip to California. We went to Disneyland. We saw people feeding squirrels by the side of the road. And we saw a premiere, which I think was just a screening, but I was a first grader. So it was a premiere to me of Atlantis in Hollywood. That was pretty cool. So we saw the movie think I'm assuming we saw the movie and we got to make if you've seen the movie then you know the little crystals they have if not you'll hear about them soon they have cool crystal necklaces so we made our own and it was just like that brown red e-rope stuff a clear crystal and like a little I think a metal thing or maybe we just threaded it straight onto that but to me it was really cool I still had that necklace a few years ago I think I still have it. I don't know where it is, but it was cool. If you've seen the movie, then you know the character Mole. There was, Mole was there. It was like a fur character, like Winnie the Pooh, Tigger kind of deal, but he was there. It was cool. I bet I didn't get his autograph. I don't know if he did autographs. I wasn't really as into characters then as I am now, but it was really cool. So that's my main experience with Atlantis. My niece loves the movie or at least loved it a couple months ago she watched it with my dad and they were into it so that's cool so went into it started and had some interesting animation it looked kind of storyboardy like I love concept art storyboards I'm I'm into that like when Disney used to have behind the scenes stuff in some of their attractions loved it so I liked it but it was it was interesting um, we saw some Atlanteans at the beginning, and I want to know why they all have white hair. Maybe it has to do with their whole mystical thing. Um, uh, Non-spoiler summary, people go, Atlantis, crystals, the end. <laughs> if you haven't seen it, watch it. It's a good movie. So I want to know why they all have white hair. Milo Thatch is the main main guy. He is an explorer, or at least he wants to be. He works in a museum. He was raised by his grandfather, who was also an explorer, history guy. His grandfather is Thaddeus Thatch. He, Milo was raised by his grandfather. His grandfather has passed away, uh, and Milo wants to discover Atlantis, because his grandfather was like, it's real, and he believes him. But nobody else believes Milo. Um, Milo found an old Viking shield. And with the help of that, the text on that, he realized that people have been translating where Atlantis or where this book should be wrong for years. They thought that the book was in Ireland, the book that will lead you to Atlantis, but actually the book was in Iceland. So he's like, we should go get it. And the director board of directors are like, no. So then he's like, not kidnapped, but kind of kidnapped by this lady who we find out is Helga. She's, a lady, very competent lady, takes him to his, this her boss, an old man, Mr. Whitmore. He's very eccentric. He has a lot of money. Find out he is ready to travel, I thought. He's actually ready to fund other people's travel, but not come. So he is funding an expedition to Atlantis because he'd made a deal with Thaddeus Thatch that if they found the book, he would fund it and he would kiss him. And they, neither of them enjoyed the kiss. There's a picture of it. It was funny. Um, Whitmore said to Milo, oh, well, he said a quote from Thaddeus, which was, our gifts are remembered, our, mm, sorry, our lives are remembered by the gifts we leave our children. This journal is his gift to you, Milo. That was nice. I really like quotes, but that was nice. So they go. They're on the expedition. Milo is their gibberish translator because no one knows Atlantean except Milo. So we meet a bunch of people. We meet Audrey, the teenage uh, mechanic. We meet 
Vinny, who does bombs. We meet Mole, who digs. Ms. Packard, who does communications. Cookie, the chef. Chef is a generous term. Cookie makes things out of food. That seems that seems right. He makes things out of food. There's also um, Rourke, the cat, the in charge man, and Helga, who's like second in command, and then a bunch of people you don't know, but a lot of them die. So that's sad. So we're going, uh, Cookie. And Helga, Helga's like, lettuce. And he's like, no. Beans, bacon, whiskey, and lard. Those are the four basic food groups. They're not. But it's cookie, they are. <laughs> Lucky people. Uh, even if I hadn't seen this movie before, and to be fair, I don't remember that much of it because I saw it in 2001. The bad guys seem pretty obvious, which I appreciate. So Stork, I want his name to be Stork. Rourke, clearly a bad guy. Um, Helga seemed... Bad also. She is. Well, okay. So Helga seemed bad when you met her because she was all shadowy and she moves in a sultry way. And that tends to be how we portray bad females. Don't know why. We do. And then Rourke, I guess, could have gone either way. But he was so competent and confident and smooth and kind of detached that you're like, He's probably a bad guy. These other people have real personalities and he just has a display personality. So, hmm. so they're going on. Um, my love is going through this book and he mentions the, Le 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 the Leviathan. He's like, the Leviathan is mentioned in Job. And then we encounter it almost immediately after Milo mentions it. Good call for a children's movie. And then Milo's like, Jiminy Christmas. It's a machine. That was funny. Because it was like Jiminy Cricket, but it wasn't. A lot of people died. Uh, then they're like in a cave deal. This is a an impressive amount of summarization for me. <laughs> in a cave deal. Uh, I was actually really engaged in the movie. And I took notes through it because that helps me. I don't know. In theory, it helps me ramble less. Has have a focus. But I wrote down quotes. There were funny quotes. Um. So Cookie's like, here's some food. He's feeding him. And then he's like, Milo's like, mmm, looks yummy. He's like, here's some more. And he just dumps it on his tray and like falls down and it's gross. It's just like glop. And he's like, you're so skinny. If you turned sideways and stuck out your tongue, you'd look like a zipper. Interesting visual. <laughs> so then Milo, the people are like, ah, oh, we've been a little hard on Milo. So they invite him over to sit with him, the main Good. Not Helga and Rourke, but the other ones. Uh, and he's like, that's what it's all about. You know, discovery, teamwork, adventure. And they just kind of stare at him. He's like, unless you're in it for the money. And they all got money, 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 money. Okay. So then more adventure stuff, blah, blah, blah. And then Milo has a cut on his right side. If this is mirror image, then this is, his, you know, his right side. Got a little cut. And then all these glowing people with glowing masks come and they see that he's wounded and like he touches it and he has blood on his finger and she touches his wound and then it's all healed. But then his people come through and they, the glowing people run away. Um, yeah, there's also some more stuff that looks like storyboard art. Cool, a little weird. But cool. Animation moves very quickly. Like the progress of animation is impressive. So um, then we find out that Helga and Rourke are the bad guys. And the king is not doing so hot because Rourke figures out some stuff. Uh, they put glowing Kita in a box. Oh, yeah, so Kita starts glowing because Rourke is like, we need the crystal. It's the power. Yeah, where is it? Oh, there, you figured it out. Because it's like uh, in the, the eye of the king. And the king is blind, or at least looks like he's blind. So at first I was like, was it, is it in his eyes? Like, in it? We watched a show where a bad guy put information in another bad guy's eye to keep it safe. 
that is not what it was. <laughs> that would not be that child friendly. But Chuck is a good TV show. Side note, it's good. Um, I like it. It's a spy show. So anyway, in the in the eye of the king. So then Rourke goes and sits in the king's chair and he sees the symbol on the book, the like squiggle with a dot is the same as the body of water, like pond kind of deal that's in front of the king. So the king had stored it underground because the crystal had taken Kida's mom at the beginning and he didn't want that to keep, he didn't want it to take Kida. So that was sad. So we're underground. Um, it's Milo, Helga, Rourke, and Kida. And they're just kind of there. And Kida sees the crystal and all these, I mean, it's not the king's actual faces. That would be creepy. But it's like big stone looking kind of masks that are glowing and spinning around the crystal. And it's like their ancestors. It's the king. So Kida like bows down, kneels face down on the ground and is like speaking in Atlantean. And then they make her get up and then she looks at it. And she's drawn to it and she starts walking towards it and then like walks across the water and goes up. And then the crystals, like the power of the crystal goes into her. And apparently mm, that's kind of normal ish. <clears throat> I mean, not like every day happens, but in Atlantis, it's not that odd. Um, also, well, we'll come back to that. So then they put Kita in a box. That's why glowing Kita is in a box. So we're going to back up to before the bad stuff. Um, when their expedition group gets to the king, he's like, get out. People can't see Atlantis and live. And Keita's like, no, it's okay. Just, it's fine. Rourke is like, can we stay for one night? We can resupply and leave in the morning because he's a bad guy and he's smart. And the king is like, yeah, okay. So Milo and Keita go on this fun little adventure. And she finds out that he can read Atlantean. And he, she, he's like, yeah, you can all do that. They can't. They don't know how to read it. So she takes him to this underwater place to read about the history of Atlantis and what's happening. And on the thing, there's these two giant metal looking men. Like it's, it's on the ground. It's kind of like a mosaic. That's the word. And so then they're there, but they don't come up for a really long time. So that was a good way to plant that in there, but not, it was very subtle, very subtle foreshadowing. So while I read stuff and then they come up, and that's when you find out that they're all bad guys working for money. They're in it for the money. However you get the money, they're into it. So then Kita, that thing happens. Kita, glowing Kita's in a box. Um, all of those big head mask things fell down. And Daniel said, down with the patriarchy. And I was like, what? Because all the kings are falling into the water. That was funny. Later, they go back. So like back up with the masks, but also Kita. So anyway, moving on. Glowing Kita in a box, down with the patriarchy. Uh, the king and Milo were talking, and the king says, uh, she has been chosen like her mother before her. In times of danger, the crystal will choose a host, one of royal blood to protect itself and its people. It will accept no other. Unfortunate for the royal family. Uh, the king's voice sounded kind of like Yoda. Daniel looked it up, and apparently it is Spock. That's what he said. Interesting. So uh, Milo's like, what? What's going on? It just, like, takes her. And the king says, in a way, uh, the crystal thrives on the collective emotions of all who came before us. In return, it provides power, longevity, protection. As it grew, it developed a consciousness on its own. Then he slash his people tried to use the crystal as a weapon, but it was too strong, overwhelmed them, and led to their destruction. Dramatic and jarring <laughs> as a people. And then the king kind of seems to die, and Milo has to save Atlantis. He doesn't get Kita back in time, then she'll be lost forever. A lot of pressure to put on a boy who has just discovered Atlantis. Uh, so then the people are going to leave and take Kita. And then all of his people, not his people, but not like Helga and Rourke, the nice-ish ones who included him earlier. They come to him one at a time, which was nice. I thought that I... Hmm. I thought that I'd written... Game over. 
But I guess I, I don't know. I don't know where it went. Man, now I'm a little sad about that. Huh. Did I like, I don't know. Anyway, so the bad guys, but the friendlier ones come over to his side. They're like, nah, we're with Milo. And so then Rourke, Helga, and the nameless, faceless, and masks a lot people leave. And then the bridge blows up because exploding guy Vinny had probably planted dynamite because this was their original plan to leave. But then they're like, hey, nobody was supposed to get hurt. No, especially nobody, at least nobody that we knew. So then bad guys leave, but they're like, okay, we have to go. And Milo's like, I'm at rock bottom. I can't, no, I'm at rock bottom. Oh, Sweet is the big, their big doctor guy who can fix Milo's neck when it feels weird. So Milo's like rock bottom. And he says, of course, it's been my experience. When you hit bottom, the only place left to go is up. Milo's like, who told you that? And Sweet says, a fellow by the name of Thaddeus Thatch which is his grandfather. So his grandfather's still giving him advice. That was fun. So then Milo's like, oh, yeah. And he remembers the fish vehicles that he and Keita had figured out how to work earlier. So they all have a crystal, like even the cute little baby that we see has a crystal around their neck. And also all blonde. All blonde. Like white blonde. But I don't fish vehicles there's a spot to put a crystal in and so Milo's like did you put your crystal in she's like yeah did you put your hand on the plate yeah did you turn it yeah while your hands on the plate yeah no so I was like yeah of course easy easy mistake so they make them work and they figure out how to make them do stuff so Milo's like hey these fish vehicles work put your crystal in put your hand on turn it's like a Half turn to the right, quarter turn back, which Daniel pointed out is how a car works. You turn the key and then it comes back a little bit. So they're just like fish cars. So they have the cool cars. That's fine. The exploding man, Vinny, is like, hey, Milo, you got something sporty? You know, like a tuna? He wasn't even like mocking. Well, he might have been mocking him a little, but he was kind of genuine about it. So they go save the day and Cookie says, saddle up, partners, bring jerky and ammo. The common things in a battle. Actually, that is that is true. Those are kind of common things in a battle. So then they get to Rourke and Helga, and they're starting to go up in like a hot air balloon kind of deal with Kida, glowing Kida. And Vinny, the exploding guy, accidentally made his fish shoot electricity out of its mouth by putting his hand on some panel. And the Atlantean next to him saw him do it and immediately started to do it too, which was a good call. So they're like, Exploding everybody, zapping up. I don't know. I feel like there should be a pun with electricity. But I don't know what it is. If you do, please let me know. So Vinny shoots the giant gun out of Rourke's hand because he's it's like a machine gun kind of deal. It's like, and then he goes, and then it's gone. And then Rourke sacrifices Helga. He shoves her, he pushes her over, and then she comes back up, and then he pushes her over again, or like throws her over two times. So finally she lands on the ground. And he and Milo are fighting. And uh, Helga shoots the balloon and she's like, it's just business. Which is what Rourke had said to her earlier. Uh, Rourke looks a little crazed. And then somehow they break the, the glass on the front of glowing Kita. And Milo cuts Rourke with the glowing blue glass. Glowing blue glass. And Rourke starts to turn blue. So it's like his right, left arm. If this is the wrong one for you, sorry. But it starts here and then it just goes up and up and up and up. And then he looks like he's going to freeze. But then he's like filled with fire. He's like lava on the inside, ice on the outside. It's pretty terrifying. And he tries to come after Milo. Again, super, super scary. Like his eyes are like glowing. But then the hot air balloon had the propeller set probably the word like under it to I guess push the hot air up and he somehow Milo gets around to the blades but uh Rourke does not he gets chopped up by the hot air balloon blades <laughs> that's kind of funny and he explodes into fragments so now he's done 
I guess Helga was also done when she fell on the ground, but then she could still shoot, but I don't know. Yeah. Um, so then we kind of get back. The lava is coming alive, but not like alive, alive, just like moving because they were in a dormant volcano and it would take a big explosion to make it move. We found out earlier. Apparently this was enough. Also like the bad guys had blown. It was covered at the top. The volcano was, and they had shot, I guess, explosive up, explosives up to open it and stuff fell down. So eventually the volcano was like, Oh, okay, sure. Not good. So we need to save Kida. If we, if we don't save Kida, all of Atlantis will die. But the people are like, we need to get out. But they hook it up to Kida's box and they start going. But then the, the chain attached to the hook snaps or something snaps. I thought that was what it was. Maybe not. So Milo jumps out and wraps Kida's box in the chain so that we can get her out. And then he like runs and jumps and Audrey, I think, helps him get back in and they escape. Barely. And then Milo gets a small crack in the box to get Kita out. And then the whole thing comes apart. And the city is glowing again. And I don't get why the hole in the glass, like, because the glass was out, why that didn't let Kita out, but breaking the box did let Kita out. Because I don't think the box would be stronger than the magic of the crystal. Apparently it was. Okay, so also, there's that big crystal, and then each person has their individual crystal. So it's like the big crystal is powering their little crystals. That was a complicated... I mean, it didn't sound that complicated, but nobody lays it out in the movie. So figure out what's happening as it goes. So um, city is glowing again. And then giant metal men come out of the ocean! So the giant metal men that we'd seen the mosaic of earlier real i'm assuming they're metal they look like metal so then i was like are they gonna hold a wall in place they need to protect atlantis yay so they like clap and then there's this glowy thing between their hands and they spread out their hands and a barrier appears and you see that barrier at the beginning of the movie but i wasn't focused as much on the giant glowing men if they were even there at the beginning of the movie as i was now so there's no lava inside but then lava is just like covering Atlantis, kind of like a very much reversed snow globe. Fire instead of snow on the outside instead of the inside. But then the lava crackles. It gets like the Atlantis decorations, squiggles all over it. And then it crackles and it falls off. And those metal men are very strong. So then Kita is back. Yay! And she has her bracelet from childhood. So in the beginning, her mom had been like taken up by the crystal. And she had kind of been holding on to Kita and it took Kita's bracelet off of her wrist and Kita comes back with the bracelet, which is both sweet and sad because then it's like kind of a thing from her mom, but also maybe I'll go with that. Maybe her mom gave it to her. I really don't think so, but maybe. So then Kita and Milo are standing and looking over the city and they have a, a well-coordinated first-hand hold. She reaches out and then he also reaches over and they hold. And that's not how real first-hand holding works. It is not that smooth. It's a lot clumsier usually. But anyway, oh well. Uh, Kita tells them, well, Kita tells Vinny, Atlantis will honor your names forever. I only wish there was more we could do for you. And Vinny's like, ah, uh, you know, Thanks anyway, but I think we're good. And then it shows their ship behind them, ship, vehicle behind them, and it's being loaded with tons of gold and treasures, and they're set for life. Uh, Milo, you find out, is staying in Atlantis with Kita and the people, and the, his people, his friends are like, are you sure? There's There'd be a hero's welcome for a person who discovered Atlantis, and he's like, I think there's more than enough heroes in the world. So he stays. So then it shows his friends back in uh, Mr. Whitmore's place. And they're all in fancy, luxurious clothes, just kind of like lounging. And they're like, Whitmore's like, okay, so to review, you found nothing. And they were like, nope, just little fish. What happened to Helga? She's missing. Rourke had a breakdown and is also missing. And the, the cookie, the Jeff is like, yeah, you could say he exploded into little pieces. 
mm, he's having a breakdown. And then Milo went down with the sub, they say, which is a good cover for where all of those people went. So like Whitmore clearly knows what's happening. He's aware. They're just making sure they're all on the same page. Uh, Milo sent Mr. Whitmore a note. And the note is on a picture of Milo and his grandfather, Thaddeus Thatch, which means that he doesn't have that picture. So that was sad. But I'm glad that he got to fulfill his grandfather's work. Even though nobody knows that, well, his friends know, Whitmore knows. The world doesn't know that his grandfather wasn't crazy, but he knows and that's what's important. So anyway, note on the picture. Um, and he's like, I hope the this enclosed, this this gift is enough proof. And it, he sends him a glowing crystal necklace. I don't know whose necklace he took or where they get those from or how that worked. But he had one. And then he, so Milo's reading it, like, as you see it. And Whitmore sees it, Milo reads it out loud. So he's like, blah, 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 blah. Milo Thatch. And then those are the last, at least, full purposeful words in the movie. More stuff. Like, a little bit happens after that. But. That was the main part. Um, okay, side note though, these people live for a really long time because he just like thousands of years old. So I wonder if people age slowly there. Like Loki ages slowly. Or well, Loki will live for a bajillion years. That, yeah, baby Yoda ages slowly. So like the child is 50, but he still looks like a little baby toddler. So when Kida's mom was taken, was she a child? Like she looks like, I mean, she's like preschooler to eight. She's like four to eight, probably looking but do they age like we do or do they age slowly? I don't know. If you know, please tell me. <laughs> so Milo Thatch, Kita touches her crystal to her father's memorial face and it floats up into the sky to spin around the crystal. Then Kita and Milo climb up stuff really fast to watch it go up. Atlantis is thriving again. The end. Oh, it's good. I liked it. Daniel gave this movie a 7.84. He said, the betrayal plot is somewhat subtle and well done. Kita and Milo were good together. The supporting team members are well-defined without being too static. Cookie's four main food groups is a great line. I wanted him to come quote it for you, but he is working and being responsible. But he liked it. 7.84. Um, I said, great characters. The story was going, and then I realized we only had 25 minutes left. It didn't feel long. It's like an hour and a half. I almost feel like there's too much lead up to the action, considering how short the action part is, but it kind of makes sense because you need to know the characters in the story. There weren't really emotional parts. I like feeling things, but it was good. I give the plot a nine. Uh, the crystal stuff was confusing sometimes, and there was no guarantee that exploding the top of the volcano would lead to the surface. That was a thing that Daniel pointed out, which was a good point. I give the characters a seven. Milo was great. The others suddenly change near the end and become good guys, but you don't know very much about them. It was clear who the two main bad guys were, but I didn't expect the others to be kind of traitors, even though I've seen this movie before. 2001 was a while ago. Um, so overall, I gave it a 7.75. Almost an 8, but there was no emotional engagement, but it rounds up to an 8. So 7.8. If you average Daniel's score and my score together, but basically an eight. So we liked this movie, uh, Atlantis, The Lost Empire. Hopefully I will watch Atlantis Milo's Return next and post that review slash summary slash commentary soon. I hope you enjoyed this video. I enjoyed watching this movie. I will see you either later today or tomorrow. Bye.